Now we're going to move on to xi1, and then this time we're going to find these three expected values first. So pretty similar to last time, the formula for the expected value of x, once again we have the wave function and then the t components, they cancel out because of the conjugate, and in the end you get something like this. You have x multiplied by xi1 squared dx. And then once again, this is an odd function, so this is going to be equal to 0, and that is why the expected value of p is also going to be equal to 0. So essentially, this whole video is going to be focused on finding the expected value of x squared. So let's work on this. So the formula for that is just applying x squared times xi1 squared dx. And then now let us remind ourselves what xi1 is equal to. So David Griffiths proved it in his book that xi1 is equal to once again, this annoying constant times the square root of 2m omega divided by h bar x times this e component. And then once again, I'm going to use a similar substitution to what we did before. So I'm going to try to get rid of this giant term over here and let this be equal to alpha. And then we're also going to do the substitution. The square root times x, I'm going to let this be equal to y. So we're going to do these two substitutions to simplify the expressions that we're going to be working with. So this becomes alpha times the square root of 2. So once you pull out the square root of 2, essentially you have uh, this x times this square root term over here, so it just becomes y, and e to the power of negative y squared over 2. So this is what our xi1 is going to be equal to. So now we can apply it to our integral. Now we're going to find the expected value of x squared and applying it to the integral. So we have x squared times xi1 squared with y e to the power of negative y squared over 2 squared dx. Now we need to change everything in terms of y. So first of all, we can try to get rid of the x squared. So x squared is just equal to dumping all these constants to the other side and then squaring the other side. So in the end we get h bar divided by m omega y squared. And squaring these terms we get 2 alpha squared y squared e to the power of negative y squared. And for dx we do the substitution. So we've done this many times before. So doing the substitution, dx is going to become the square root of h bar divided by m omega dy. So we can pull out some of the terms, some of these constants out. 3 over 2, and then in the end we're left with this integral over here, dy. So what is this integral going to be equal to? So previously, you might recall that this is pretty similar to one of the integrals we saw before. So in the last few videos, the integrals that we've dealt with uh, either looked something like this, so the Gaussian integral which is equal to the square root of pi, or we had a y square tacked onto the front, dy. So we had to deal with these two integrals before. So this time, instead of y squared, we have y to the power of 4. So I'm going to show you a new trick to how to evaluate this. So the way we solved for this expression here, actually solved this in the problem 2.10c. So you can check that out if you're interested. And in that video, I used integration by parts. So here I'm going to show you a new trick to how to uh, derive the, the answer for this expression over here. So now we shift our focus to Essentially, it's now a math problem. y to the power of 4 times this e term dy. So before we evaluate this, I'm going to define something else. So let's say I have this integral over here. So this is essentially just the Gaussian integral over here. And this is actually equal to the square root of pi divided by the square root of a. So the square root of pi times a to the power of negative 1 half. And you can easily prove this, so because we know that this is already equal to the square root of pi, you can actually prove this using a double integral. So now that you, you've tacked on a constant over here, now you can just do substitution and you can see that this will indeed be the case. So if you tack this constant over here, this a over here in front of y squared, you'll see that this answer changes slightly by this factor over here. So now that we've established this fact, I'm going to differentiate both sides in terms of a. So when I differentiate both sides in terms of a, because this is in terms of y, I can actually just move the 
d d a over to the inside. So I'm applying d d a to both sides. So because this is in terms of y, I can pull it on the inside. So integrating, uh, differentiating this term over here, I just use the chain rule. So these the, the terms that are in front of y, we just pull them down. dy. And on the right hand side, we have the square root of pi negative 1 half a to the power of negative 3 over 2. And then we're going to differentiate in terms of a once again. So we do this process again. So once again, you differentiate this. And once again, the negative y squared comes down. So you get y to the power of 4 e to the power of negative a y squared dy. And on the right hand side, we have negative 1 half. And then we pull this exponent down. So a to the power of negative 5 over 2. And don't forget the square root of pi. So now you see that on the left hand side we have something that's very similar to what we're trying to look for. Except this time we have a over here and before we had the a is essentially equal to 1. So in order to find what this integral is equal to, all we have to do is just to substitute a equal to 1 over uh, to this expression over here. And the right hand side will give us the solution. So simplifying this right hand expression we have 3 over 4 times the square root of pi divided by a to the power of 5 over 2. And then when we substitute a is equal to 1, you see that this term over here just becomes 1. So in the end, you see that this integral is equal to 3 over 4 square root of pi. So this is how you evaluate this integral. So now we can go back to this problem. So this integral over here is equal to 3 over 4 square root of pi. So now we can proceed with our solution. So the expected value of x squared is equal to 2 times 2 times uh, this constant over here, h bar divided by m omega. I'm going to drag out the square root. And then uh, we have alpha square. So alpha is just equal to this expression over here. So once we square it, we get m omega divided by pi h. So we've dealt with all these constants. And now we multiply it by this integral, which is equal to 3 over 4 pi, as we've just demonstrated. And here comes my favorite part again. We just cancel everything out. And then you see that our final answer is equal to 3 h bar divided by 2 n omega. So this is the answer to this problem. So this is the expected value of x squared.